All right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Algebra. What a celebration. I absolutely love this time of the year. Uh, one of the reasons that I absolutely love this time of the year uh, is because we get to finally show off all of the phenomenal math skills that we've learned in fifth grade um, through algebra. Now, <clears throat> challenge questions. Uh, I hope you gave it your best effort, right? And then what I'm going to do is during our live session, we are gonna go through each one of these questions and then this one, I'm hoping you guys are scratching your head like, Mr. Stahl, what is up, man? I know I got that one right, but you said I got it wrong. You made a mistake. You're right, I do make a lot of mistakes, but this time I did not make a mistake. Uh, so remember, the goal is to get the three blue boxes correct, or at least close to it, uh, but most importantly, to learn from the problems that you get incorrect, uh, because blue is review, and then yellow is, is, is a challenge because you were not taught this yet. So, um, you know, what I'm gonna do, I, I, it just, I wanted to tell you guys the story real quick and it's been weighing on my brain and, and I feel like if I just tell you guys the story real quick, then I can move on, uh, get back to math. Um, so I got this aunt, right? And, and I think we all have like uh, family members that uh, might be a little, how do I say this politely, embarrassing, right? I have this aunt that is, um, she's uber embarrassing. And to prove how embarrassing she is, I just wanted to show you guys her Facebook picture. That's her. That's her Facebook picture. That's my aunt right there. Um, Aunt Sally, I mean, the picture does a better job than if I were to, you know, describe her to you. Uh, we went to Buffalo Wild Wings last night, and she always does these absurd things. I don't know what, I don't know if she just does it for attention. I don't know what it is, but it's very embarrassing. And um, she'll just, she'll balk, like, like a bird, like a chicken. She'll balk, right? And it's... It, it just gets embarrassing when my five and four year old are acting more mature than than my aunt. But anyways, it's helped me in math because I just have to say um, to everybody I ever encounter, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I've gotten so used to it. And then I realized something. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally will help me in math. It helps me with the order in which you complete a math problem. So one thing that my aunt has done besides embarrass me is she's helped me and all my students learn the order of math by please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And I'm gonna explain to you what please excuse my dear Aunt Sally stands for. It stands for the operation and the order in which you complete your operations. Like P is for parentheses. So Anything in parentheses, you complete first. When you are done, so sometimes there's no, there aren't any parentheses. Sometimes, you know, when you finish with all the parentheses, you can move down. The next one's the exponent. Exponent's that little tiny little guy on top of the base. If the, in fifth grade, you probably will not hardly ever see exponents. But if you do, after you're done with your parentheses, you have to complete all the exponents. And then when you're finished with exponents, it's multiplication, division. Now, it's not multiply and then divide, right? It could be, please excuse dear my, because it's like reading a book. When you're on this level, you look at the problem and you just go from left to right. If it's multiplication first, do it. If it's division first, do it. And then finally, the last thing you do in a problem is addition, subtraction, um, or subtraction, addition, because that's on the final level. If you're confused, I kind of expect you to be confused. It's okay. We are going to learn much, much more about this. I just wanted to introduce you to my Aunt Sally and show you how my Aunt Sally helps us. 
Now let me give you an example so you are not as confused. This should look a little familiar. Huh? Now, a lot of you guys looked at me and you said probably said the answer was 14. Because most of us know at this point in, in our math intelligence that you want to make sure that you complete the parentheses first. So 3 minus 1 is 2. Now we have a new problem. 5 plus 2 times 2. And normally, you are no longer going to see a multiplication sign look like this because that's a variable. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So now you have a new problem of 5 plus 2 times 2. And because we've been reading since we were in kindergarten, we always think that you read from left to right. Well, in math, it's a little bit different you have to make sure you're going down the order of operations. And the first thing that we have to do is multiply or divide first. So we have to complete this first. And 2 times 2 is 4. So it's 5 plus 4. So this answer is actually 9. So the challenge question's answer is actually 9. I know someone's going to tell me, Mr. Tull, you messed up. You messed up. You said the answer wasn't 14. And I got 14. Not this time, folks. Let's move on, shall we? Quick vocabulary terms, real, real quick. Today we are working on a math problem. Uh, math or in our math lesson, it's going to say expression. It's going to say computation. It's going to say variable. Those are very fancy ways for pretty simple ideas. So expression just doesn't have a, a an equal sign. Okay. So this is an example right here of an expression. It's just saying p times a half. Uh, down here, it, it's an example of a computation. Multiply p by a half. All that means is you're just kind of writing it down in words, right? So if you write it as a math sentence with just a variable, which we'll talk about in a second, um, and, and a number, and in the operation, this is an expression. And then a computation is just actually writing that out in words. Instead of multiply p by one half, you literally put multiply. And there's other ways that you could make this expression a different computation. We'll talk about that all today. And then a variable, this is why you have all been very scared about algebra. Because you're like, oh, I don't know what a plus b plus c is. I don't know. You shouldn't know because they're letters. And you just use letters when you don't know what it is. Okay. And sometimes you can figure out what the answer is. Sometimes you can't. And we'll talk about that in the future as well. All right. Now, I know a lot of my friends, um, they don't have their math book yet. I will help get you there. I'm talking to the art teacher right now to make sure she has no, she doesn't have any supplies for you guys. And then I'm just going to have a pickup bin. But today you don't need as long as you're paying attention. Take out a blank piece of paper and write it down. All my friends that have a book, you know what to do. You need to open your book. You need to write this down. Now, number one, it says, <clears throat> what is another way to say half times P? Well, what about half of P? What about the product of half and P? What about P times a half? What about uh, a half times P? Now, why is it the letter P? Just because we don't know what it is. But the, I, the idea is that you can take a computation and turn it into um, a problem like this. Alrighty? Perfect. Um, let's move on. It says write the computation in words. Okay, we can do that. Here we go. 7.5 minus 2.25. You know, we'll do this in the live session. Let's just do the odds together. B plus 9. Well, you could say a lot of different ways. You could say uh, the sum of B and 9. You can say 9 more than B. You could say B more than 9. Any of those work. You're just going to put this in words. That's all. So this one is division. Now, the two that I've done already, multiplication and addition, the order doesn't matter because in those operations, uh, they, the order does not matter, right? The answer doesn't change depending on which one you put first, but in division, it does. So you have to make sure that you say the first number or variable um, in the right order, okay? So this is 1.6 divided by 0 0.2, right? 1 and 6 tenths divided by 2 tenths. 
Um, so you want to make sure that you put it in that order. Divide one and six tenths by zero and two tenths. And then look at it at number seven. They have it written out in words. Now we just have to put it um, in like a number sentence, right? Into an expression. It says subtract two thirds from three and a half. Order matters. So you want to put three and a half first and then put three and a half minus two thirds because that is subtracting two thirds from three and a half. And then last but not least, you have P by Q. Can you find that answer? Absolutely not, but we can write it down. Uh, we can write it down. So P divided by Q just looks like this, P divided by Q. And that is all I have for the YouTube session. I will see you at 1030, where we will dive into this further and we will check those challenge questions. See you at 1030. Remember, the Zoom link will appear on our stream. All right, perfect. See you at 1030.